So it's almost been an entire full week since the release of Dragon Ball Fighters. I was gonna make a video about it earlier, but then I decided to wait a couple more days until I finally, you know, discussed what I thought about the game. And overall, I really do enjoy the game. I've really loved this game. It it's just everything that a Dragon Ball video game needs to be. And I feel like more people who are complaining about it because of honestly really silly reasons that aren't really good reasons to not like the game in the first place really need to give this game another chance or just keep trying and stuff like that because this game honestly it's it's one of the best looking Dragon Ball games that we've gotten like ever one of the best looking Dragon Ball games that we've ever gotten and I feel like some people should just keep trying and you know not just say like oh the game's trash da 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 because stupid reasons but whatever so anyways, uh, it's almost been an entire week. The game came out on January the 26th. It's right now currently the 31st. And in two days, it'll be February the 2nd, and then it'll be basically an entire week since the release of Dragon Ball Fighters. Now today, I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about basically what I thought about the entirety of the game, all the way from the story mode, all the way to arcade mode, to how I feel about online being how it is in the current moment of the release date of Dragon Ball Fighters and where we're at right now which is January the 31st it is about like 1 30 in the morning as I'm recording this and because it's Wednesday uh yeah it's like Wednesday yeah uh you might see another up you might see another upload on my channel uh, at the time of me recording this uh, maybe not, uh, but if you do see it, then you get a double upload. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into the review starting off with s the story mode. So overall, Dragon Ball Fighters' weakest point in its entirety of the game is definitely, in my opinion, 100% the story mode. So the story mode, you know, it's your typical, like, kind of, like, Dragon Ball, like, kind of filler that only really exists in the video game universe, which, you know, isn't bad because with Xenoverse's uh, story mode with, like, uh... Mira and Toa and then Demigra, that was all very interesting, and I find Xenoverse's story mode uh, definitely 10 times more interesting than fighters even though, even though I kind of like Android 21 the thing that I found really ironic is that the first all right, there are three modes for the story mode there's the super warriors mode or story there's the enemy warriors story and then there's the Android 21 story mode and they're all completely different none of them exist in the same timeline or kind of like in the same story they're all completely different from each other and that's the kind of part that really bugs me the most because no matter what I do in Super Warriors arc, Enemy Warriors arc, and in Android 21 arc, none of it matters besides essentially the Android 21 arc, which is the only thing I found interesting in the story mode. You basically, in Super Warriors mode, play as like Goku in the beginning, then you unlock Krillin, then Piccolo, and then Vegeta, and then you basically play through the entirety of that just with those characters that in my opinion of course and also another thing that i didn't really like about the story mode either is that it kind of did like the same thing that they did with budokai 2 from what i hear where you can kind of move a cursor around the map and select uh an area that you that you want to go and in this case you go ahead and you go to a specific point on the map and then you fight clones of the existing roster but you only fight so very limited few of them being like Krillin, Gohan, Frieza, Cell, uh, Kid Buu so will sometimes appear. Uh, I think I said Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Krillin. Just, you know, just the typical, like, like every, like, f like, few characters will just show up repeatedly over and over again. And in the beginning first arc with the Super Warriors arc, it's not even really all that difficult. That's another thing that kind of bugged me a little bit is I, I didn't get any sort of, like, challenge from the story mode until I finally got to, like, the Android 21 arc stuff. It was, like, it was like at least a little bit challenging, and the only time that I ever even actually lost was during the final battle. 
of the anime uh, and of the android 21 arc and that was against android 21 herself and the thing that kind of bugged me as well in the android 21 arc was that she was honestly kind of annoying half of the time and honestly she was annoying for the beginning first part of the of the story because she kept letting like her like hunger like matching kind of like side like erupt out of nowhere and it got annoying after a while and I just wanted her to shut the hell up and she never did and then finally she did the exact same thing that Majin Buu did back in the Buu saga which was there was good and evil inside Majin Buu and then the evil decided to just kind of like come out and they and have its own existence and that's the same thing that happened with 21 and I was like wow they're just gonna completely just rip off something from an actual like interesting arc <laughs> so Overall, Android 21 as a character was very interesting when she was first announced. And then I completely lost interest in her character once it was announced there was like a Majin version of her. And I was just like, why? There, there was literally no reason to do this besides to finally add one final character to the roster. And also another female character because for the longest time, Android 18 was the only female character of the roster to, uh, that you can choose and even then she's partnered with 17 you know so you know they just decided to add one more character and that just so happened to be Majin Android 21 so overall the, the story mode wasn't very interesting uh, in my opinion some of you might find it interesting a lot of it didn't really make a whole lot of sense I just didn't find myself interested in it uh, 16 was enjoyable to at least have a little bit and I, I haven't listened to Z or, or I, rather, I haven't watched Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z in Japanese. So hearing 16 in Japanese was honestly really cool. I like him. I like his Japanese voice better than his English dub voice. But either way, that's the end of my whole part for the story mode. I'm going to go ahead and jump into something else. Probably in terms of like sound design and graphics. And that'll probably what I'll go ahead and jump into most. So yeah, let's go. Let's, actually, yeah, let's go talk about that right now. I think a lot of people will agree with me and say that the look and sound design for Dragon Ball Fighters is absolutely fantastic. Uh, all the way from being able to have your character charge up key for meter to be able to do the level ones and their level threes, uh, all the way until like the actual impact of someone's like level one, like for example, Super v uh, Super Saiyan Vegeta's uh, level one is his big bang attack when he charges up and then actually uh, he actually shoots off the the blast and it hits someone. The sound design for that it it's such a loud like explosion and it's very Dragon Ball like and they hit the nail on the head in terms of you know overall sound design and also look and just graphics in general this game is absolutely amazing in terms of just visual design it's absolutely amazing you know the best looking dragon ball game that we can ever really ask for i remember months back and even weeks back uh still people were like uh oh, but xenoverse 2 looks better than fighters and i just i i couldn't i couldn't agree with them i couldn't disagree more and say that Fighters is definitely the better looking game of the two. Uh, not to knock Xenoverse 2, of course. I I played a lot of Xenoverse, Xenoverse 2, enough to get the Platinum Trophy for it, so I do like the game. But, oh man, Fighters sound design, visual design, absolutely fantastic. I can't give enough praise for it. Attention to detail for a lot of characters, like level 1s and their level 3s, like Goku's, uh, Vegeta, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta's, uh, Super Saiyan Blue Goku's. Uh, Super Saiyan 2 Teen Gohan, Cell, uh, Frieza, Majin Buu, Kid Buu, all these characters, Goku Black, Hits, oh my god, all these characters have so many amazing looking level 3s and the attention to detail for this, the, the whole like animation for the level 3s, absolutely fantastic, I can't get enough, I can't give enough praise for how well they made this game look and sound, it's absolutely fantastic. I also want to go ahead and talk about, uh, kind of really quickly, uh, not really, but I'll probably talk about it a little bit. Overall, in terms of gameplay, this game is absolutely fantastic, and this department uh, as well. I can't give it enough praise. This game is, is amazing in so many ways. The overall gameplay, I remember weeks back when it was playable at like E3, I think. I remember seeing people posting like, like kind of like early access kind of gameplay. 
of the game. I remember watching it, of course. People weren't really like all that great at the game, but they didn't care. They still wanted to try it out. They still wanted to kind of like show it off a little bit to those who weren't at E3, but still wanted to see it. And then, of course, when I would just sit there and I would watch it, oh man, I I, I couldn't help but just get like super hyped. I couldn't help but get but just get super hyped about it. It was so much fun to watch. It was it was so much fun watching people play that it just always got me hyped for like anything like competitive, like it, like a, a competitive like fighting game player. If he were to get his hands on this game and then if you put like two of them up against each other, it would be a super hype match and it would just be absolutely insane. It, uh, learning the combo strings for a lot of the characters is a lot of fun. A lot of people have put a lot of a lot of practice hours in training mode, and that kind of shows that a lot of people are interested in trying to find those combo strings and get the maximum amount of damage. And it's absolutely crazy. I there. Someone on Twitter, uh, Swag Kage, he uploaded a combo video on his Twitter showing that with Sparkling Blast and, you know, obviously with the right setup, with the right combos and, like, basically, like, all seven bars of meter, you can completely kill a character with just, like, the amount of, like, stuff that you can do in a combo string. It's absolutely just amazing. The stuff that you can do in this game, it's very simple and it's very easy to pick up in my opinion, but there's a lot of complexity with the game that does come with it that a lot of people do need to learn. And that's a lot of that's a lot that a lot of people need to like kind of like understand because I have seen people kind of complain about it and say that the game is hard. It's not that the game is hard, it's that the it's just that you're not very good at the game and you're not trying to, you know, learn these combo strings. You're not trying to get better. You're just trying to use auto combos. You think this is Xenoverse, but this is entirely different from Xenoverse. Um I have no idea what else to other than tell you other to tell you other than just keep trying, just keep practicing and eventually you'll get better. But anyways, that overall just sound visual and gameplay wise absolutely fantastic i can't give enough praise and i don't think i don't think a lot of people can give enough praise for how well arc, Sy arc system made this a fighting game first and then a dragon ball game second and even then they hit the nail on the head with making the attention to detail for a lot of stuff absolutely fantastic so i can't give enough praise for arc system works working so damn hard on this game making it am I mean, as amazing as it is and yeah so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and try to go ahead and talk about some other stuff really quick and I think I'm gonna go ahead and talk into maybe arcane mode and see just see how I kind of like think about it so with this being a fighting game there are of course a lot of different game modes we talked a little bit about the story mode in the beginning of the video and i already said a lot of my opinions about that uh, i talked a little bit about the training mode and just overall you know it's training mode it's there to just like help you learn uh learn combos come up with different combos for different characters and stuff like that just different combo strings right but something else that i really did enjoy about the game and i'm glad that they actually did this is that there are like these like combo challenges that are available for people to do and i feel like that is very good for a lot of new new players that are trying to learn this game because at first it does seem easy but then of course it does progressively get harder with different combos and that incentivizes people to try to link those combos into maybe like a level one or, or level three or even better, make the combo longer and then uh, do a snap vanish or, or or teleport and then swap into Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta and do his fireball back into his level one and then do a DHC into, I don't know, Gohan or Goku or something like that. And I really like that that exists in the game because it incentivizes people to do it and then they realize they can do this with this combo with this character and then link that combo into a different character and then link that into a level one or to maximize damage into a level three i'm really glad i'm really glad that it exists because it also helps new players you know learn a little bit more about the game and make them better overall in the end and just yeah overall i'm really glad it does exist in the game obviously there also is uh online which there is casual there is ranked i have not done ranked matches yet but i have done casual matches and you know overall my opinion about casual matches is that it's mainly just an area where you, you don't really want to like try all that hard you just want to go ahead and fight other people just casually of course that's the name of the of the mode but 
I do I did find myself in the beta finding a lot of people who were really good at the game instead of playing ranked they played casual and I didn't really like that I really hate when people do that but what can I do right uh, of course there is uh, arena match where you can actually um, you can go ahead and watch people fight or from what I heard from other people who talked about the game there is a mode where there are six people in one match right and one character chooses one character another chooses another and another chooses another and they're all on one team and that's the same thing on the other team and essentially what happens is that it's, it's three versus three all of them are one character and there's six people playing one character at a time on the screen and that sounds cool but I wonder how functional it actually works i haven't seen anyone do it but it is very interesting obviously there is a local battle so for those of you who do have friends that come over and you do want to go ahead and maybe do a couple quick fights there is local battle so if you have a second controller and you have a couple of friends come over you can go ahead and just hook up two controllers and fight each other and it's as simple as that uh of course there is arena mode and or and I think arena mode, arcade mode, just the arcade mode of the game basically, right? And I've seen a lot of people have mixed opinions about it. And a lot of people kind of like talk about it and they really like it because the AI is like kind of difficult and they like that. And it's a lot more difficult than it is in the story mode for like the first like t like two arcs. But then of course, obviously I, I already talked about it, but so not gonna get into that. But anyways, do people do some people do talk about like the difficulty of the game for the arcade mode is kind of ridiculous because obviously there are like different like ladders of like stages that you can do right and some of them are easy uh, almost ridiculously easy but then of course once you unlock once you do those you unlock harder versions of those and then of course because they're harder they're going to be obviously harder so you, so you need to get better but the thing that some people i've found find absolutely ridiculous is the fact that no matter what you do when you go and you play the harder versions of the arcane mode it's kind of ridiculous half of the time because they're all right super saiyan blue goku and vegeta the only way that you can unlock these two characters is by either getting 300,000 zenny for Vegeta and 500,000 zenny for Goku, or the other way around, I don't really remember. Uh, I pre-ordered a game, so I didn't have to really worry about that, but it's whatever. The only other way that you can unlock these two characters, though, is by going and doing uh, the hardest versions of one of the arcade modes, like ladders, I, I forget which one it is or which of the two it is, obviously one de being depending on one of the characters, either Goku or Vegeta. And overall, the thing that people have found ridiculous about it is that you need to complete it with a, a rank or higher. And the reason why that is really difficult with this mode is because the AI is kind of ridiculous in the sense that if you mess up a combo and they go into like a level three, just simply like a level three, which does like 30%, which is like you're supposed to do. It does like 50% or even more than that. It's almost kind of ridiculous from what I've seen. And especially from Rhyme Style, who did tweet out uh, a Twitter video showing that he did a level three against uh, a Frieza with his Frieza. And it did like 20%, right? Like 20, 25%, right? And then the Frieza did his level three and then it did like... 50% enough to enough to basically kill him right and it was kind of ridiculous I remember seeing it kind of like thinking whatever but then I realized kind of like how ridiculous it was in the sense of it shouldn't be doing that much damage but whatever so a lot of people are complaining about the arcade mode I guess overall a lot of the modes that are in the game I'm really happy that they're there one thing I do want to say really quick is that one thing I didn't really enjoy about fighters in some sort of way something that really does kind of like irk me a little bit is the fact that there is no easy way to party up with friends and i looked it up and the only way that you can like party up into like a lobby and fight against your friends is you need to be in the same region so i live in north america and let's say i have a friend who lives in europe he has to go and back out of a lobby and select the north america region and then me and him have to be in the same uh, lobby and let's say I'm in lobby one and then lobby lobby one ends up being full Then he'll have to go into lobby two and then I go and try to join lobby two and then what if that becomes full? Then it just becomes sort of a hassle to try to you know get into each other's lobbies Depending if they're full or not from my experience. It doesn't seem like it's always full none of the lobbies at least 
but I do find that kind of like being kind of like a dumb way to party up with your friends. I feel like there should be like an area on the map, <clears throat> an area on the map. I just voice cracked a little bit. I feel like there should be an area in like the open lobby and like you're like standing in, like maybe like Kame House or something. Yeah, like Kame House where you can go and then you can just like talk to like Master Roshi or like Krillin or something. And then you can just set up a, a private lobby with one of your online friends and then you can just fight each other. I feel like that's how it should be and that's how it should work because then it makes connecting with your friends from across the world so much more easier. And the reason why I mention this is because I do have a friend and uh, me and her mainly talk on Twitter a lot, but she is a friend of mine and she did get fighters recently. <coughs> <coughs> she did get fighters recently and I, I really wanted to play against her because apparently she plays a lot of fighting games from from my, from what I have found out. I didn't even realize that, and I was very intrigued. I wanted to go ahead and, and fight against her in Dragon Ball Fighters, but then I found out like kind of like the ridiculous way that you can, the only way that you can like connect with friends and play against them. And I was like, that's like kind of lame, and I wish it wasn't like that. Like I kind of get it, but it, like. I, I honestly don't get it at the same time so either way it's whatever it's kind of like a minor complaint about it I wish it was just a little bit easier tiny bit easier but what what can you really do so either way uh, I don't know really well what else to talk about other than just my overall my complaints are the story mode and kind of like how lackluster it was kind of like how kind of how uninteresting it was half of the time and then of course obviously the whole private lobby with your friends connecting with them and stuff like that so either way uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here if you guys did enjoy this Dragon Ball Fighters review and my overall thoughts about it I hope you guys did enjoy leave a like if you did if you're new to the channel consider hitting that subscribe button and click that notification button so you never miss a new video and yeah I'm gonna go ahead and head out of here hope you guys have a beautiful life wonderful life have a beautiful day and I'm out.